applauding the president on bringing back home these innocent Dapchi girls does not hold water. Rather, or in the first place, the government failed to do or take their responsibilities seriously. Most importantly, the abduction and return of, this, of the girls took place without resistance. It's a sign that the APC-led federal government has lost the war against insurgents. The basis for which it came to power in 2015. It is also a clear indication that Nigerians can no longer depend on this government for their safety. The way and manner the Tapchi girls were abducted and returned is a clear demonstration that the federal government is fooling itself and not Nigerians, as the whole process is shrouded in secrecy, raising more questions than answers. So much everyone for staying with us the video you saw earlier is that of the governor of ekiti state a pdp governor who is saying that no credit should go to the federal government on the return of the dapchi school girls so more than 100 girls taken from the school in dapchi returned yesterday and since then the feelings have been mixed so are the reactions hours after the girls were released the main opposition party people's democratic party released a statement suggesting the kidnap and the release of the girls was orchestrated. Now, the federal government is accusing the PDP of plumbing the depths of infamy for saying the adoption and release of the Dapchi school girls were staged, stage managed. In a statement issued in Abuja on Thursday, the Minister of Information and Culture, Elijah Lai Muhammad, said, such postulation portrays the PDP as an in inhumane, insensitive, unpatriotic, and unworthy party. The statement reads, and I quote, as we have said many times since the abduction of the Dapchi school girls, no government is exempted from its own share of tragedies. What makes the difference is the way such tragedies are managed. Whereas it took the PDP all of 18 days to even acknowledge the abduction of the Chibo girls in 2014, the APC federal government acted promptly and responsibly when the Dapchi school girls were abducted on the 19th of February 2018, hence their quick release. End of quote. Let me get back to my panel on uh, on the program tonight. Kaudi Ogundamisi in London. Hi, Shai in our Buddha studio tonight. First and foremost, perhaps I, I should get your reaction on these, uh, Mr. Ogundamisi. What do you make of this? The, the, the reaction, uh, is it right for the PDP to think this is stage managed and perhaps the reaction of the federal government on this? So look, Washington Governor Fayoshe, personally to me as a father of three girls, it is shameful, it's disgraceful. Then hearing the PDP, the opposition party, treat real tragedy of human beings, we're talking about girls in this way, it's, as a Nigerian, I feel so uncomfortable. I cannot believe I come from the same country as those elements. To actually play politics with the life of helpless, harmless, innocent children in our country is disgraceful. And I think the supporters of the PDP should knock sense into the head of people like Governor Fayoshe. Yes, we can criticize Buhari and the government for their inadequacies, but to actually play politics and call it stage, being stage managed I visited uh, my degree. These are real human beings. These are people that have been abandoned. These are helpless girls that have been abandoned by every government, be it PDP or APC, or by the military government. These are girls who, for going all the, the crime, the only crime they commit is going to school and seek a better life. Having said that, for the Nigerian government to even celebrate the release of these girls, they should hide their, their heads in shame, in shame. These girls should not have been kidnapped in the first place. The government should have lived up to its responsibility and learned from the mistake of the PDP government in the case of, of the Shibok girls. 
as a country, this is a time we need to unite, whether you're PDP, APC, or wherever you are, whether you're from the south or the north. Because if, 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 if there's fire in Maiduguri or in Yobe, there's fire all over Nigeria. We need to drop the politi our political differences and come together. Let me give you a very good example. In the UK, the Russians attacked us, or, or claimed to have attacked uh, uh, innocent people on the streets of, of the UK. Everyone is coming together. Everyone is acting as one to condemn Russia. There are times we just need to, to leave politics aside. So both sides, whether the PDB or the APC, they have acted in a very unpatriotic way. They've lost their humanity, and both parties should apologize to Nigerians. All right. Let me quickly go to Abuja now. Uh, uh, Aisha Yesufu is a co-convener of the Bring Back uh, Girls campaign. You have been in the forefront of asking, demanding from government that kidnapped and abducted girls from their school should uh, be returned. Now that these ones have uh, returned, we see expecting perhaps the other girl with the news about the dead ones. How does this come to your group? And how do you receive the news of the political uh, exchanges that we're seeing presently? Well, it came to us uh, as a shock, something that is unbelievable when we heard uh, that Dapchi girls had been uh, abducted and it, almost the same manner in which Chibok girls were taken away. And it was something that we just couldn't deal with the pain, having stayed almost four years coming out every day and making demands for Chibok girls and all other abductees. And so it was like, didn't we learn anything as a nation? The tragedy of Chibok was supposed to have been a lesson that you would have taken out for and say never again would such a thing ever happen. And of course it did happen. When we heard about the rescue, definitely we were happy, we were glad that it was quite heartwarming that parents who, whose children had been taken away, they will be re reunited with their children. Innocent children that had been taken away will be brought back to their families. And of course the sadness of hearing that five had lost their lives. There are five parents who are grieving right now, who, 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 are, who are pained that the daughters they sent to school were taken away from them. And then here we are, hearing again, that a, a girl was left behind because of her fate. And it, it's so disheartening. Today is 23 days to four years. In 23 days, it will be four years that 112 Chibok girls have, have, have spent in captivity. What is their crime? Is it because they are Nigerians? Is it because they are poor? Or is it because they dare to be educated? All of us went to school. If it's a crime to be educated, then we all should be locked up. And then here we come back, we see this comparison of politics. How can you compare when it comes to tragedy? Wherever, how does it, what does it say? How does it help the five girls that have been lost now? That who did what better? Is that what we should be doing? There should never have been any abduction in the first place. The primary responsibility of government is the protection of lives and properties. And the rescue of Chibok girls, Dapchi girls, Lhasa women, Unimed lecturers, every abductee that is out there, their rescue is not a privilege, it's their right as enshrined in the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We will not stop saying this. And even when we come out to demand for them, we are not doing them a favor. Let, let me we're quickly perhaps ask you, uh, are stop. you one... How can let, we stop sorry. and be playing politics with Sorry, lies? if I may quickly butt in here, have these critical questions about those who are thinking about the, uh, the logic around how those girls were abducted and how they returned. Are you one of those who are curious about uh, the logistics around how these girls were taken and perhaps the way uh, they, they were returned? Are you asking such a question? Have you ever thought that perhaps this is stage managed? We are asking questions. As a movement, we ask 14 questions that the federal government is yet to answer. And with the return of that triggers, it is more paramount that they answer those questions. And there are more questions that we'll be asking. First and foremost, we were told that the, the terrorists had been degraded, the war had been won. So how come in a place where you, the, the terrorists that you had degraded were able to go to a school, to a town, and attack for hours and take away 100, uh, 110 uh, students, girls? They traveled for hundreds of kilometers and they didn't meet any security. 
We hear now the military come out to say that security was, was, they were, were taken away. Who, who, who gave that authorization? How did that come about? We, we, we see safe school. Safe school. The safe school initiative is there. Thousands, uh, millions of dollars have been put into it. How come that a school in the three, one of the three most affected uh, areas when it comes to terrorism was left unprotected and it had close to 900 uh, girls in it? There are a lot of questions that we are asking. How come there was no air surveillance to follow them and get our girls back immediately? How come there are so many questions that are out there? And we want the federal government to come clean and tell us what is going on. And even with, with the rescue, with the way the rescue had gone on, all we are asking from the federal government is the truth and nothing but the truth. As a movement, we have a say. We always ask, what are we asking for? The truth and nothing but the truth. Right. And we need that right now. We need to come together as okay. a nation to fight this. We have an enemy, a common enemy. We need to unite and fight. All right. Aisha Yesufu, uh, rights activist and member, uh, co-convener of the Bring Back uh, Girls uh, Movement. Many thanks tonight, uh, Aisha, for your time on the program. And also, Kaudi Ogunamzi, who have also intervened on some of these issues on the program all the way from London in the United Kingdom. Well, that's our show for tonight, everyone. Whatever you may be watching, either on the go or in your living room or in your offices, many thanks for watching and for being part of the program tonight. I'm Sean Wakimale. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.